What's going on? Alex O Crypto here, here to go over a little bit of what six pillars of trading I use to help me with all my trading and all my needs within the trading space. So we're going to go over here. We're going to go through some of these. We're going to give you some resources. We're going to give you some ideas and how we really develop totally as a full, complete trader and all the little aspects that add to that piece of the pie. Now we have six pillars here. This is just a simple idea of, of mine, but I want to make sure that I'm here to try and help you develop as a trader, create some better rules for yourself, some better ideas and some better practices. Okay. So we're going to go over the first one here and that's technical analysis. Okay. So technical analysis is coming to the charts and developing some sort of plan, some sort of idea. Now, whether that's support and resistance, we're just looking at the Bitcoin chart here, whether that's an oscillator, whether that's using Fibonacci's or different tools within your arsenal that you've learned. I always suggest having an oscillator support and resistance and maybe volume and Fibonacci, okay? You wanna add some confluence to your trading and then you wanna develop what time do you wanna trade on? Is it the 15 minute, is it the 30 minute? And doing a top-down analysis, looking where price is and making sure that you are prepared as a trader. So you can see simply here on the Bitcoin price that we have been in a downtrend, so we are looking for shorts. Typically, you wanna trade the trend, right? You wanna look for possible short opportunities and you want to look for reversal patterns, right? So right now I have my eyes set down here on a simple trade setup, looking for a little bit of a bounce of a swing failure pattern. I like to trade bullish divergences down at key levels of resistance and support where we can look for a bounce and a possible change in direction of price. Okay, so technical analysis can get very, very in-depth. We have tons of videos on that, and we also have a live stream Monday to Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern time, where you can come by and we'll answer any of your questions to the best of our abilities. We also have a free Discord. Now, this Discord is full of great traders. Shout out to you guys, the Otter Gang. We're all out here trying to help each other everything is free here trying to help you grow so join us the link is in the description below now going back here now we can see that there is technical analysis another key thing is understanding fundamental analysis so fundamental analysis is something that we don't totally cover here however fundamental analysis if you go over to this good resource called investopedia okay so go over to investopedia if you're becoming a trader and look at something like this because this is where you can find actual knowledge on things of any one of your questions. Investopedia is one of the first stops on my trading journey of where I look. All these weird jargon words that you don't even have an idea of what they mean, right? Point of controls, break of structure. I mean, it, it goes on and on and on, right? From the POC and the BOS, then you get to ch chotch and like change of character, right? So like there's so much to know. So fundamental analysis, key takeaways, okay? Fundamental analysis is a method of determining stocks real or fair market value. So is the stock undervalued or is it overvalued, right? And from there you can adjust the way you're looking to trade it. If it's undervalued, well obviously you'd like to probably long it, right? Um, fundamental analysis, um, search for stock current trading at prices higher or lower than their real value. Is the fair market value higher than the market price? The stock is deemed undervalued and by recommendation is given, right? So what is your fair value for this certain product? Like if it's an altcoin, okay, and, and it's new to the market, maybe it's a little bit undervalued and it hasn't got the recognition it needs and maybe it's a good spot buy. All these things come into fruition when you're looking at certain things, when you're doing a top-down analysis, when you're looking at technicals, but also when you're doing the fundamental analysis. So if the fair market value is lower than the market price, the stock is deemed overvalued and his recommendation might be not to buy or to sell. So like Bitcoin right now, Bitcoin right now is very much have has had straight up. It's gone to the moon for the last year, right? So maybe it's a little bit overheated right now. Maybe a little bit of a cool off is an idea, right? These are ideas that you bring into your technical analysis as a trader. In contrast, technical analysis favors studying the historical price trends of the stock to predict the short-term future trends. So that's what we do over here is that we do a lot of technical analysis on all your favorite altcoins throughout 
the week, throughout the day. We get free setups in the Discord. We do all that thing, all these things in order to help you as a trader make better decisions. So going over to the next one, what's this next pillar? Risk management. Okay, this one is, is personal to me. When I first started trading, I got wrecked because I just wanted to make money. And I thought if I pressed buy enough times that I would make money, right? But what I didn't realize is that the less... The more times I press buy, the less opportunity I have to press buy without good risk management. And what do I mean by that? You want to have an R multiple that is making you money, right? So you want to have at least a two to one ratio of where if I risk $100, my stop loss, $100 risk, right? That I want to make at least 200 to $300. And by doing this, with a, even with a 50% strategy, okay? Let's say I miss four times and then I hit three times. I'm going because of my R multiple and the trade setup and not taking profits too early and letting my trades fully ride out. I'm able to continue trading, okay? Continue trading. We're risking 2% to maximum, I'd say 10% of our accounts, okay? Depending on how much you're trading with. For me, I risk about 4%, okay? And this, dif this differs to every kind of trader. I've been trading for quite some time now. So for me, I, I can risk, sometimes I risk a little bit more because I know it's an A plus setup. Sometimes I risk a little bit less because I just want to get in and I, and I, and I see the setup, but I'm not 100% sure that this is fully to do with my plan, but it does look good so I can risk a little bit less, but also look to catch the move as well, right? Um, and by doing that, you know, I can have a trade like this you know, I have the favorability in my, in my course. So risk management, remember, we, if, we're, if we're trading with $1,000, right, what is 10%, right? So we only want to risk maximum 100, right? And by doing this, we can add to the longevity of our, of our, of our trading because what's very important that I've realized is that I got to learn to be a good loser, okay? If, if my stop loss is down here, and I have it set. I'm not moving it. I'm not adding to my trade as it falls, unless that was part of my plan, right? I'm, I'm keeping it where I said it was, it was good. And if I get knocked out of there, I'm invalidated and I continue because if I do move this, right, we'll get wrecked a lot faster, right? That will diminish the amount of times that I'm allowed to trade because I will now start eating into my losses and then it messes up my whole strategy. So let's keep honest with ourselves. Let's use good risk management. Let's not move those stop losses. Let's not add to a trade when it's losing, but I know it's going to go the right direction, okay? Let's have a good set out trading plan, okay? Next, trading plan. So trading plan. What is a trading plan? How do you develop a trading plan? Well, with, with trading, I suggest using the rewind button, okay? So rewind button is at the top right of trading view here where you can go back in time where you can back test certain trade setups and and see if they're profitable over time right so for me i typically trade on the the half an hour to an hour to a 15 minute time frame right so i can go back with my oscillator i can look at okay i'm tr trying to trade ranges and i'm trying to trade bullish divergence and i'm trying to trade um swing failure patterns so through that i can mark out my areas I can back test. And one key thing about developing a trading plan is back test during the times that you are trading. For me personally, I trade between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m., right? So I'm not going to back test at 3 in the morning because I'm not there, right? So make sure you're doing your back testing within the time frames that you're actually trading, therefore giving yourselves a better chance to be more accurate with your probabilities, okay? And, and, and trading is all probabilities. We want to develop an edge through a trading plan that will help us be profitable, right? Even if it's simple support and resistance. If I use good risk management, if I, sh if I short here, I long here, I short here, I long here, right? Depending on how your setups work, this is how we develop a plan, right? And we don't want to defer from the plan. We want to stick to the plan and not deviate from that. There can be multiple different setups within a plan where you're looking for continuation, where you're looking for reversals, where you're looking for um, swing failure patterns, where you're looking for all different types of things. And those are different setups within your trading plan that you know are profitable. But you have to have that plan 
before going in. I'm not going to go into here, go into the seven minute. I'm going to be like, oh, we got a pump. Okay, we got a swing failure pa pl pattern dump. We got a break of the, you know, and then I'm just going to go, oh, this looks like a good level. I'm just going to short it here. Well, what, are, what is my criteria to get into a trade? Develop that criteria in order to get into a trade. Okay, is there a swing failure pattern? Do we have a bearish divergence here on a higher term time frame? We have a break of, we have a break of up downtrend here. Okay, it broke, it retested. Now it's pushing back up. Okay, so there's different things that you have to build into your trading plan as a trader that you, you over time you see these things happen right in front of you guys. And, and like I said, the best tool you can use is that replay tool. Okay, on to the next one. <laughs> Entry and exit strategy. Okay, so when you look at a trading plan, right, and you have, let's say, I went long here, actually. I went long here, and I got out, and I got out here, okay? I could have held this trade. However, this was intraday. This was a quick, quick, quick trade, okay? Very quick trade. I saw continuation pattern here. Um, this was during the day, but I only, my exit plan was, okay, my exit plan, it was here. So I was looking, we had the aggressive push up, right? My exit plan was the top of this, this height here. Okay, so I'll draw a horizontal there for you guys. My exit plan was here, right? So what do I do? I have my first take profit here, halfway through, and then I take all of my profit out here, right? Now, do I set my exit right at the top here? No, I front run it just a little bit so that price does get up to that area, right? And you can see how well it worked out that if you front run this a little bit, right, you don't have to wait for this little pushback here. So you can see there's a little pushback here, right? But if you front run the key level, which is these highs, right? If you front run it just a little bit, I'm telling you, this will save you so much mental stress through all of your trading. Look, you came straight up, you touched it, then you, you didn't come exactly to that level. And as it's going back, you're getting frustrated. You're like, oh, the price is running away from me. The price is running away from me. This is BS. No, 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 no. It's, it's where you have an exit plan on your trades, right? Where you have that exit plan. If, if it's to come up to these highs, get a little bit in front of those highs, right? And look how well it worked here. So it worked well for me. That was a very easy quick three minute trade i was waiting for the pullback here it pulled back perfect entry ride that up made that bank right three minute trade i shared that in the discord so join us in the discord we would love to have you especially if you're a good person we all have a lot of fun there and a lot of good people there so link is in the description below so always have an exit strategy also part of your exit strategy is your stop loss okay how many times, I always stress this, how many times um, when you know you're wrong, let's say price is gone, you're going long here, okay? You go long here and price is going against you. Price is going against you and you know you're wrong. You know you're wrong. How many times have you exited early because you know you're wrong? I bet you zero. I bet you zero. So sometimes, cut, let's say I have $100 to risk here, right? but I know price is going against me. Cut it at 50, right? You've just, you've just lowered your loss by 50%, okay? Therefore, giving you a better opportunity for the next trade and more capital, right? Pre preservation of capital, Warren Buffett, you know? First rule, don't lose money, right? Don't lose money, okay? Going over, <laughs> strong mindset. Now, this is where... This is where it has taken me the most work, but yeah, I've repped the most benefits from this. Now, still to this day, sometimes I have trouble holding trades, okay? Holding trades is kind of where my mindset lacks, okay? We, and, and shout out to Kyle from Investing Share, um, where he talks about drawing your momentum and trusting that momentum to the upside, okay? Holding trades, okay? Knowing when I'm wrong, Coming in with a healthy mindset where I'm not trading that I have to make money. Don't trade like you have to have money. Emotionless is impossible. However, trusting the, trusting the trade, trusting your plan, having courage. I think to press that buy button, it takes a lot of courage sometimes, right? Press that sell button has a lot of courage sometimes. So the mindset, there's tons of books out there. Um, start, start with Mark Douglas. I'm um, trading in the zone. There's tons of books out there. 
Best Loser Wins is another good one. There's tons of them out there. However, it's about getting your ego out of the way. It's about understanding that losing is part of the game. It's also about getting that pride, that greed, that fear of all these certain things that, that the markets will tear you apart. So join us. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate every single one of you. God bless you and have a great rest of your weekend. Peace out.